Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Friday the 9th of July 2021 and we're carrying out our regular morning update on the news, financials and gold and silver prices. We can see that silver fell below $26 and may struggle to get much above it. So let's take a look. <laughs> Well, welcome this, yes, sunny Friday morning. It's 9.37 a.m. GMT plus one, and some little snippets of news today which should prove of some interest. Looking at Bloomberg, headline here, very few kids need to shield from COVID. Large UK study finds. Binance booms as crypto trading unfolds beyond nation's reach. This is the company that was banned from operating in the UK and other countries. And yet business seems to be booming for them. And how the ECB's new inflation goal will shape the economy. We'll take a quick look at that one. The European Central Bank's decision to raise its goal for inflation and even let it overshoot the target. Now, this is what we reported on yesterday for a while gives it more leeway to support an economy which for years has turned in a lacklustre performance, by, certainly by international standards. Nine years after former ECB President Mario Draghi memorably said the central bank would do whatever it takes to preserve the euro, his successor Christine Lagarde's revamp of ECB strategy following an 18-month review is intended to inject more clarity into policy making on interest rates and inflation. Bottom line is, policymakers agreed to seek consumer price growth of 2% over the medium term with a symmetric aim. And Lagarde said the old inflation target was seen as too elaborate and told a press conference that the new version removes any possible ambiguity and resolutely conveys that 2% is not a ceiling. So basically Lagarde is saying 2% is almost a hard figure, but they will allow it to exceed that. But she's just bought herself some time. In other words, allowing, whereas before it was up to 2%, she's now allowing herself time that if it goes beyond that, she can bring it down. But they're just using words, verbiage as we call it, to pretend that they're going to be tough. BBC home front, not an awful lot. NHS COVID app may change. We've got holiday booking surge after quarantine relaxation. This is perhaps the most important bit. UK economic growth slows in May, just grew by 0.8% as coronavirus restrictions eased to allow pubs and restaurants to serve indoors. This marked the fourth consecutive month of growth, but it was a slower rate than analysts had expected. It was also a slowdown from April when the economy grew 2%. The economy is still 3.1% below pre-pandemic le levels, the Office for National Statistics said. And we shouldn't be surprised about that. It's going to take time. In America, Biden defends US withdrawal amid Taliban advance. And this is basically where he has said we didn't intend to remain an occupying force indefinitely. Trump supporters will be glad to hear Stormy Daniels' ex-lawyer's sentence for extortion. It's quite an interesting story. Disgraced U.S. lawyer Michael Avenatti, this is the Stormy Daniels lawyer, has been sentenced to 30 months in prison for attempting to extort up to $25 million from Nike. He's got more because we also have Avenatti is due to begin a separate trial next week on a series of charges in California, where prosecutors allege he defrauded clients out of millions of dollars. And next year, he'll be back in Manhattan Federal Court on charges relating to his most famous client, Stormy Daniels. He's accused of stealing $300,000 of Miss Daniels advance for her book contract. Well, he's in prison. Not going to be earning an income, so I'm not sure what assets he has, but according to most reports, he's $11 million in debt already. 
So, do you know, he's going to declare bankruptcy. If he's in prison, might as well declare bankruptcy. And then that wipes off all of his debt. A very good communicator, but a charlatan. Talking of charlatans, what's happening in the economic world? Well, the dollar index is marginally up this morning at 92.43, though it was higher yesterday and then fell back. It was about 95 and something yesterday morning, fell back, 90, sorry, 92.5 something, fell back. Uh, we'll explain why in a second. Energy oils are up. WTI crude 73.48 and Brent crude 74.55. Stock markets took a bit of a hit. Again, not significant, broadly under 1%. Although UK and European markets are up between half and one and a half percent. Data yesterday, this affected the markets, had job openings. Came in at, came in at 9.2 million. That was on Wednesday. Yesterday, and this was the slightly disturbing news, initial jobless claims actually went up to 373,000 compared with 350,000 expectations. The previous week's figure was upgraded to 371,000. It was showing, if you'd looked at our video yesterday, it was showing that figure to have been 364. So each week they upgrade these figures. This was highly disappointing and seems to suggest that perhaps, just perhaps, the rise in employment seems to be faltering. And this affected both yields in the United States yesterday as well as the dollar. 10-year yields actually fell to 1.25%, its lowest since February. The COVID-19 Delta variant is causing some concern and people are beginning to think the economy is not going to grow as fast as they would have liked. And you can see going at the services PMI that was announced on Tuesday for June was 60.1% compared with expectations of 63.3. So maybe we've jumped ahead of our skis. That's the government and reporters stating that we're coming rapidly out of this recession. We'll have to wait and see. Wholesale inventories today. I haven't got a consumer credit figure and I haven't had a chance to look that up. It was the jobless claims that really took the headlines. So, what's happened to gold and silver, we hear you ask? Well, gold over the tw last 24 hours has fallen $10 and stands at 1801. It did dip again below 1800, but it seems moderately comfortable at this 1800 level. You can see here over the day figure, day's figures, went as high as 1818 and then fell right back when the, new, when the news came out yesterday about the jobless figures recovered somewhat but nowhere near that high silver's struggling silver's down 21 cents it's fallen below 26 went as low as 25.79 hovering again at 25.92 this is concerning because when yields fall and the dollar falls you'd expect silver to go up it's not doing so because of the fears that we're not out of this economic recession yet. And therefore, the industrial demand for silver, arguably, is not strong, or as strong as one we're anticipating. So what are the technicals looking like? Well, we've got some form of support at 25.69, which is based really on an upward sloping trend line. We have resistance now at the 10-day moving average of 26.13. It had held above 26 for a few days, which looked good. And we have further resistance at the 50-day moving average of 27.06. If this trend line of 25.69 is broken, you can expect silver to fall quite rapidly down to $25. Going back to gold for a second, just so you can see the chart. We have support at the 10-day moving average of 17.84. We have resistance at the 50-day moving average of 1835 
and the MACD is pointing to higher prices for gold, whereas the MACD for silver are pointing to consolidation. Bitcoin down $220 over the last 24 hours. So that's it. That's where we are at. We are going to produce a second video. It'll either come out today or we might actually produce it or publish it tomorrow with our normal weekly update. The reason for that is that we've generally found that viewership on a Friday is not that great. It hasn't been that great all week, in fact, but Fridays normally tend to be the worst viewership. So we'll put the second video out tomorrow. And we may very well talk about the potential threat that silver may actually continue to go down for a little while yet. And we'll have a look at that specifically. Thank you so much for listening. Please, if you like what we're covering, give us a thumbs up. Of course, subscribe if you haven't done so and press the bell sign. Have a great Friday. We'll be back tomorrow with a weekly update and a video specifically on Silver's performance. Thank you once again. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank <music> you.